Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so my name is uh, Brian Stinson, um, and I'll talk a little bit about why I'm wearing a uh, CentOS shirt uh, here at a Fedora conference, because um, we've actually uh, done quite a few things over the past uh, uh, past year and a half or so, actually, to uh, kind of collaborate on a number of different things. And one of them is the Fedora CI uh, project. Uh, I'm here to talk a little bit about um, some of the, the processes that go into Fedora CI, I'm going to give you a little bit of a, uh, a background in why it exists and uh, talk a little bit about the infrastructure and the uh, kind of the things, the hurdles that we had to come uh, to get over in order to get a lot of this stuff implemented uh, for the Fedora process. So uh, I, I think it's... Um, probably good to give a little bit of background and I'm, I apologize for these slides because they are kind of misaligned but that's okay. Uh, so what is Fedora CI? Um, it's a number of different things. Uh, it's a Fedora objective. Uh, it's got a number of people who are uh, tasked to work on it uh, and a number of people who volunteer their time uh, to both to add tests uh, and also to give feedback on some of the uh, infrastructure components. Um, it has a set of infrastructure. We do have some uh, a good set of hardware uh, behind the project and uh, we do have a place that um, that you can actually go through the process and, and try it out. And it's, it's a process. Uh, it's targeted at uh, the individual packages that go into Diskit, and uh, the background behind this is we make check is pretty awesome, but it's not quite enough to um, uh, once you actually build a package and and get it through the system, install it on a on a machine. You kind of want some other things to go on after the fact. Make check is kind of a um, uh, a good process to run in the build system. Maybe it's you've shoved some things into your spec file in make check so that you can uh, kind of get some initial feedback on the quality of the package. But really, the build system shouldn't be uh, composing and a, a new thing adding your package onto it and doing a whole bunch of integration tests. Because maybe your package is, um, is, is pretty complex. Maybe you need to set up a number of different systems in order to do a full end-to-end -end test package. Or maybe it's just, uh, just the fact that uh, you want your, your package builds to complete a whole lot faster and um, you know, shove the tests on down the road. But it's a, um, uh, we can talk a little bit about the objective. We talked about the Fedora CI initiative a little bit at Flock 2017, and I think it was made an official project ob objective shortly after that. Um, the The background behind this was uh, there's a group of people that wanted to figure out what continuous integration looks like, you know, based on both uh, pull requests to Diskit, which we um, uh, we recently added in, but also to, you know, what happens when you actually uh, push a branch to Diskit and uh, do an actual build. And there were a number of, of challenges that, um, that the team wanted to kind of um, overlook at the beginning. And so uh, the, I'll talk a little bit about the history. Um, there was a group of people that was was interested in what it would look like if after a commit to disk it happened if we just recomposed an artifact including the new package what would it look like if we built that package recomposed um, the operating system and then did tests on the, the operating system itself and so we started with this um, this really self-contained system that you know is, it was sort of a side process uh, alongside the rest of the Fedora, the the traditional Fedora package workflow that you're you know know and love. Um, and so what the what the pipeline did um, 
was it was very focused on the Fedora Atomic package set because, um, well, for a, a number of reasons, but uh, one of the nice things that the Fedora, Fedora Atomic package set gives you is a limited, uh, self-contained package set that can produce an operating system. And, you know, you don't have to go through, uh, it, if you imagine you're building the whole process from scratch uh, and and kind of thinking about things as, as they go, if you use the, the Fedora Atomic package set, you don't really have to, um, you don't really have to reinvent a whole lot of things until you do. Uh, I know that's that's kind of confusing, but uh, it's, it's really easy to actually, uh, you know, build an RPM, compose an OS tree, and then test that that artifact itself. And so that's why um, we started with the uh, with the Fedora Atomic package set. It's a um, it was kind of a uh, a nice way to keep things isolated, while also giving us a a good set of of packages and tests to uh, to try things out. And so the uh, the project kind of grew as things go, because we started with a you know kind of a small group of people who were looking to reimplement a, a few processes to try uh, some new things related to the the build and test process. But it, it turns out that we have um, quite a few moving pieces to take care of, and. To kind of echo the um, the sentiment in the keynotes earlier, most everything in Fedora is about people, and that's that's very true of the Fedora CI process as well. There are a number of different um, uh, teams who work on it full time for their job, a number of volunteers, and a number of different groups who all have to collaborate together and who have done quite over the past couple of years to uh, to make this happen. And so I, I tried to kind of capture this in, in visual form, and I am leaving a ton of stuff out, even to get to, to this page. So this is a number of, of different teams, and I, I kind of grouped everyone by a team, but it's not necessarily um, folks who are you know working full time. These are all uh, just different groups who are responsible for uh, for different pieces of the uh, the infrastructure, and it doesn't look like this slide fits on on the screen here. But uh, it, but if you see, what you you've got um, the uh, the Fedora CI thing here in the middle, and this is a number of of different folks who who all have uh, a piece of infrastructure, uh, a piece of software that relates to the Fedora CI initiative. So you've got the QA team down here who manages. Uh, uh, Taskatron and um, and results DB, which are important for uh, getting results in from all the various places. Um, you've got the Fedora infrastructure team who manages uh, the the actual systems that you interact with: Koji, uh, Diskit, uh, Bodhi. Um, you've got the the Factory Two team who is uh, working on some of the uh, the decision models and. Um, the software that that helps you or that helps Bodhi make decisions about, um, or is supposed to to help uh, Bodhi make decisions about gating and things like that. Uh, you've got the the Contra CI/CD team. Those are the folks who actually wrote most of the um, the Jenkins libraries that we'll talk about later that operationalize the Fedora CI pipelines. And I'll show you how that stuff works, and we'll we'll talk about that uh, here in just a minute. Um, you've got the Fedora CI uh, at, in the upstream first teams. Those folks are, um, yeah, what we'll kind of, there we go. Um, those folks are focused on the standard test roles. That's another thing we'll talk about here in a little bit. It's the uh, wrappers and, and libraries that help you actually either uh, wrap existing tests or write new tests. Um, and they're also uh, working on actually helping individual packagers get uh, existing tests from various places put into Diskit on their own packages. And then there's, uh, there's me, who is up here in the corner. Um, I work for the CentOS infrastructure team. Uh, when we came, 
when the Fedora CI initiative first kind of started out, we were looking around for uh, a set of infrastructure and just kind of a base, uh, base platform in order to run these various experiments. And luckily enough, in the CentOS project, we'd had some extra capacity. And we were looking to, uh, to sort of partner with the Fedora project in a number of different ways anyways. And so the Fedora CI initiative was, um, was kind of important for us uh, as an infrastructure team because we could, you know, provide the infrastructure and also help, help folks collaborate a little bit uh, by using our hardware and some of our, uh, so some of our existing resources. So I'll talk a little bit about the infrastructure itself, because um, that's what I'm interested in. That's what I do for um, my day job uh, and sometimes my not day job. Um, the it was it was important for us to during the Fedora CI initiative to kind of rethink some of the. Um, uh, some of the existing patterns that existed in CI already. So if you think of your upstream projects that you might be working on, um, a lot of people are familiar with the uh, the existing ways of running a Jenkins master. You have a Jenkins master that lives on a machine somewhere and you create a number of different jobs that uh, that point directly to your repos. It's a lot of stuff to manage. It's a lot of um, if you don't do it correctly, you end up with a lot of pointy clicky types of things in your Jenkins master, stuff like that. We wanted to rethink that a little bit and orchestrate some things in OpenShift. And so to give you a little bit of an idea of, you know, we're, we're still kind of a, a small scale project here, um, but we can support all of the, the stuff going on uh, in apps.ci.centos.org. We started with OpenShift Origin 3.5. Uh, and we've upgraded a few times um, in place over the over the past year, but we are up to about 19 um, uh, 19 nodes, bare metal nodes that uh, run various processes uh, across the infrastructure. All of the the tests that go into Diskit are actually scheduled on different pods in OpenShift. Uh, Jenkins actually orche orchestrates all of that for uh, for us in the pipeline, and OpenShift has been um, it's been pretty critical in spreading around that uh, that test load across you know a number of different machines. Luckily, we do have um, some bare metal resources uh, dedicated to that, so you know you can actually spin up VMs in OpenShift if you really want. And uh, there's a lot of things that that you can do uh, when you have a, a bare metal infrastructure like this. And it was a it was kind of a way to let the the folks developing the CI pipeline, it, it was a way for them to consume infrastructure in a way that didn't get in their way. Um, so they didn't have to come to me every time they wanted to try out a new uh, a new service or a new um, a new part of the Jenkins libraries. They didn't have to ask me for VMs. They didn't have to uh, really need any of that. They could. Uh, uh, it was a way to, for us to get the infrastructure out of the way of the development process for them, and that that helped quite a bit. Uh, so I mentioned Jenkins. Um, OpenShift uh, has a, a pretty good standard set of Jenkins images that are available that you can you know deploy in your projects and and stuff like that. They started the the CI pipeline folks started with the base OpenShift Jenkins and then ended up customizing it in in a number of different ways, which is um, actually a whole lot of fun uh, for certain definitions of fun. Um, if you're interested in in how that all works, uh, we actually do that for some of our other tenants in in OpenShift as well. So uh, I'm happy to talk about that uh, sort of out in the hallway if you're uh, interested in running a whole bunch of Jenkins masters. Um, because we, I, I think we're up to, we're up to 20 different projects that we've migrated, uh, different tenants in the, in other parts of the CentOS CI infrastructure. Um, and yeah, so that's been, uh, kind of a fun thing to watch. Uh, so this is, this is kind of what the, 
CI pipeline is all about. It looks pretty simple. Um, if you go to, um, this is a public URL, I don't have it on here, but there's a, another one later on that you can look at. Uh, this is a number of the different pipelines that are targeted specifically at the Fedora CI initiative. So you've got these, um, this uh, CI pipeline tab right here that is, uh, it's sort of the initial, um, uh, the initial pipelines targeted at the atomic host style pipeline. I'm going to show you um, a view of uh, of one of these pipelines here in a minute, and we'll talk through some of the individual steps. But uh, I did want to show this sort of front page here. Some of the interesting things um, that you see, we've got the, the two um, uh, the two pipelines for F26, F27 were targeted at the atomic host. Um, this Fedora all packages pipeline, that's something that we started earlier this year, uh, pretty early in the year actually. Um, and that's probably more applicable to you folks here in the room. Uh, I'll, I'll show a, a little bit about that here in a minute. But, uh, um, but yeah, uh, uh, hitting this front page, it's completely open. Um, I don't think we've, uh, we've really documented this very well about uh, how to actually go in here and find things uh, and how to get results. We'll talk about that as well. Uh, and finally, the, uh, well, the, the CI pipeline objects and libraries, I mentioned the, uh, the Contra CI CD team is, is working on that. Those are all open source up in the, um, uh, it's the CentOS pass sig. Uh, is where these these folks are actually doing their work. Uh, if you look, so if you look on GitHub.com uh, slash CentOS dash pass sig, uh, those folks are uh, all of these pipeline objects and libraries are available uh, to you up um, upstream. There you can uh, you can check those out. But basically, it's a set of convenience methods in Jenkins that are imported into all of the masters that. Um, that these folks deploy. And it's a, a set of convenience methods to go through and, and run different parts of the CI pipeline uh, based on the, the tests and, and things. But at the core for the interface for, uh, for packagers, it's really just Ansible. Um, the, the mechanism for, for doing all of this stuff is, um, is, is pretty easy. Um, if you you know kind of look at, at things a little bit, it, when you're putting your tests in disk git, uh, we, there's a specification for where those go um, and kind of a little bit of boilerplate YAML that you put in the uh, in the file there. But um, I mentioned that um, the the upstream first team and the Fedora CI, the folks working on Fedora CI, have put together a set of, of roles that are um, directly available to you as a packager. So this is the standard test roles and the libraries that go with it. They have a number of, of different methods that help make things a whole lot easier. For example, um, there were a number of test suites that were tied to uh, a harness called Beakerlib. And so when you have a number of, uh, of packages that are using the same test suite, it kind of makes sense to create a separate role that kind of abstracts a whole lot of, uh, of functionality for the packager. It makes things a whole lot easier to, um, to migrate into the, the test infrastructure. And so they have a number of roles that uh, that both, you know, you can, there's a role that just runs a script, there's a role that uh, will run your Beakerlib harness, and I think they, um, I think they were looking at Avocado as well. Um, but we can take a look at that here, because the Fedora CI initiative is a process, and it's something that requires a little bit of um, it, it requires a little bit of work from from some folks and I, I promise it's not hard or anything but there is a process to it I want to take a look at some examples um, so this is from uh, libomp um, 
This is actually a. Uh, uh, yeah, this looks alright. Uh, yeah, so this is libomp. Um, under the under the hood, uh, this is a, a beaker lib test, I believe. Um, this doesn't look quite quite right, but anyways, so there's a uh, there's a role in here that you can. This is the entire test.yaml file in libomp's diskit directory. So if you look under, um, if you go to source.fedora.project.org slash um, you know libomp, you'll find uh, this yaml file. I'm going to show you a kind of a basic one uh, that I just tried out last night um, uh, for one of my packages uh, called NVI. Um, I wanted to do the structure in there. There's There aren't really any tests for NVI because I don't know if you know anything about it. It's from it's uh, a re-implementation of, of Vi from 4BSD a long time ago. Um, so, yeah, we just, this is the test suite, user been true, which uh, is, um, I don't know, it's, uh, it's a good test suite for this, I guess. But, um, <coughs> But the idea is that the YAML for this is, is actually pretty short, especially if you use the, the basic roles. Um, you can just run a script. And if the script is in your, uh, you check the script into your um, repository there, or you can deliver it as uh, part of your, your actual package. Um, or you can deliver a sub package that includes the the test suite that you that you actually run so if uh, NVI upstream actually included their test suite in a, a test runner script uh, all I'd have to do here is just package that up uh, tell it the directory the the working directory of the test suite and then this run uh, directive right here actually tells you what script to run so it's a it, it's pretty easy to uh, um, to write that in, in basic shell if you, you're you just getting started out. You can actually run the tests on your own machine. So the standard test roles are packaged in RPMs. Um, it's a number of, um, like I said, Ansible roles, but then also a, an inventory that uh, is um, basically operates on the the package that you have installed so in in this on your local machine basically as long as you have the package installed on there um, so I would you know DNF install NVI uh, and then run this Ansible playbook script uh, this is the standard inventory that says I'm going to use the the local machine and not do um, any sort of uh, of provisioning or anything like that um, and then give it my test.yaml. It's going to spin up Ansible, run user bin true, and then say that everything passed. Um, there's a couple of different uh, different things that you can do. Um, the tags. Uh, let me let me actually go back. The tags directive here um, talks about different scenarios that you can run the test under. Uh, so the classic uh, the classic case is. Uh, you know, just a bare RPM on a system. You can run it in the um, in a container context, and there's a number of of things that you can do uh, it, based on the tags that you give your test. One of the cool things um, about the um, standard test roles here is it does include other inventories as well. So if you didn't want to install NVI on your local machine there, there's actually an inventory and a, and a role in there that will spin up the Fedora QCOW2 image, install your package, and then run the test there if it's, you know, you don't want to actually pollute your machine or something like that. That's actually what we do in the, uh, in the CI pipelines themselves. Uh, I'll show that in the, the different stages here in just a minute. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what we've done this year. Um, the Fedora Atomic CI pipeline, um, that was sort of the first step of doing all of this. Building out the individuals of what happens after someone commits to Diskit. Um, and there were some pros and cons here because 
on the one hand, it was nice that we had a limited package set and a limited deliverable to work with in the beginning, because that makes things easier to, to develop. But when you have such a limited pack, it doesn't, um, it doesn't reflect the entirety of, of packagers that you can address. It doesn't, um, it doesn't include the, in, the entire Fedora packager ecosystem. And uh, that, was kind of, uh, that was kind of unfortunate. The, the Fedora Atomic CI pipeline, um, again, be, this is, I could have put this, I could have put all three of these kind of in the pro and con section because um, the, the pros are, all of this actually makes it easier to get started with, but then we have to, we have to iterate on that to make it actually useful to the general packager ecosystem because uh, the Fedora Atomic CI pipeline does run its own builds. Um, it doesn't call out to, to Koji or anything like that. It, um, it's got a separate process for that. Um, it runs its own uh, test composes to do uh, its own, uh, you know, tiny little atomic host to do tests on, um, and it operates after the merge happens. So you don't really get results on this until uh, after the um, the uh, the push has already happened to disk it. So this is the original pipeline. This is the Atomic CI pipeline. Um, so you can see here, this is, uh, what package is this? Vim for Fedora 27. Um, there's a number of different steps here. And what it actually does is it performs an RPM build. Uh, so let's back up. Uh, the, the package maintainers for Vim have just pushed uh, a new uh, commit to disk it um, on the F27 branch. And the CI pipeline is going to run an RPM build on that. There's a limited environment that we uh, actually run that in um, to get the Vim packages out of it. It injects the output of this RPM build process into the OS tree compose and will actually compose a new image, um, a new, uh, these are kind of truncated here a little bit. It'll, it'll compose a new image, a new uh, cloud image that includes the OS tree, and then it'll boot and do functional tests. And then there's some some things down the road that um, that are more relevant to the uh, atomic host use case and uh, and OpenShift. But you can see that the the test pass um, this is all defined in the uh, the repository itself in the test directory, um, along with uh, some of the integration tests uh, for atomic host and OpenShift. And so we don't. Like I mentioned, this doesn't target the entire Fedora Packager ecosystem directly because it's a, a limited package set and a small number of maintainers and things like that. So we started the Fedora All Packages pipeline. And this kind of fixed some of the, um, uh, some of the differences between the atomic CI process and what you would expect as a normal Fedora packager. Um, so the all packages pipeline either performs or imports Koji builds. That's dependent on if it's a, a merge to disk it or if it's a pull request. Uh, so if it's a pull request, it'll actually, um, the pipeline will go out and, and actually do a scratch build and then use that RPM in the, uh, in the tests. Um, like I said, there's a similar process, same pipeline uh, style for pull requests. And it's available for any package that exists in Fedora right now. It's not a, a limited subset of them. Um, the cons right now is the, the major one is that the results aren't being effectively communicated back to the packager. Um, and that's, that's for a number of different reasons. But um, the, the results of that, uh, you know, by the, the fact that Result, results aren't getting back for um, existing packages basically means that we're running a whole lot of tests in the infrastructure, um, more than you might think, but that information is more or less useless because it's really hard to find and, and things like that. Um, I will talk about the number of tests that are available. This was taken this morning. Um, let's see, what is this? This is base OS. 
Uh, so there are 793 packages in the base OS group. Um, in Diskit, there are 81 packages that have uh, a test.yaml committed directly to Diskit. Uh, and then there are another uh, 116 that have a test.yaml uh, committed to the upstream first repo. And I'll talk about that uh, a little bit more here in just a minute. But upstream first is a separate place that uh, the, uh, the teams are using in order to sort of stage tests in uh, before they get merged into Diskit. So we've got 81 uh, existing uh, plus 116. And then there are 46 um, packages that are, uh, this is a um, pending pull request to disk it at the moment. And a few more stats. This is for Fedora Server. Uh, there are 518 total packages in the group. Uh, 77 of them have a test committed to disk it. 108 of them are um, uh, still being worked on in the upstream first repositories. And yeah, so that um, that kind of brings us to one of the things that is is missing a little bit, and one thing that we hope to to solve because um, the outputs of these pipelines are um, they're putting out messages to FedMessage, but that's really the only place that we're notifying at the moment. And so you might have seen, um, if you're a, a frequent um, subscriber to messages in Data Grepper or something like that, is you're seeing a lot of uh, CentOS and Fedora, and maybe, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, so this is. Um, the Uh, I don't know if they are linked directly from here, um, but this, yeah, this does exist. Um, this is these are actually populated automatically, so I don't know if the if the test directory here was actually created. Okay, uh, I will fix that and make sure that we link to those. Um, that's a good uh, good observation there. Um, so if you look in. Uh, in data grepper right now you'll probably see quite a bit of um, of message traffic on the org.centos.ci uh, message prefix that's where all of this stuff is actually getting delivered we've got some work to do in order to uh, to tie that back into some of the notifications and um, and uh, and make that available to uh, to you but uh, out there we are emitting fed messages for each each step that you see in uh, in Jenkins there, um, and so I want to take a minute to um, just kind of work through what's coming up next and what the focus should be, because the packagers are kind of a, a important part of this process and we've we've been able to build all of these pieces of the infrastructure the individual software the um, kind of processes to go through it but if we don't get more tests uh, and the teams that are working on the Fedora CI initiative can't themselves um, put in tests for you know, thousands and thousands of packages themselves. Uh, we're going to need help from from packagers, and so I'm hoping that we can make it a little bit easier uh, going forward to um, uh, to get these things committed. So let's talk about what's next. Uh, documentation. Um, I, it was brought to our attention that the quick start on the wiki needs updated and uh, it needs to be displayed more prominently. Um, the, the NVI example that I went through last night, um, I think there are some simpler things that we could do to make it easy for folks to write simple shell scripts that 
uh, test their packages and, and plumb that in directly instead of uh, going with a couple of examples. Uh, and just have a, a couple of actual quick start examples in addition to what exists already. Um, there, uh, there's some great information out on the wiki already if you want to write your own Ansible roles for doing integration tests and, and things like that. Um, but uh, but yeah, the, I, I think that the, uh, doing the doing your own Ansible roles is probably like a, a step two type of thing, uh, where after you you know get your in individual scripts written, you want to uh, to move on later. Uh, it's getting notifications enabled is um, is probably one of uh, one of the things that we should focus on. I know that the all packages pipeline doesn't have a good set of filters in FMN. Uh, and so I think um, we should probably work on that um, uh, going forward because, you, you know, it's really hard to, uh, uh, we didn't provide a good policy for that uh, and split things out in a way that, um, that folks can consume. And then finally, just keep, uh, one of the, the things that we should do is to keep the conversion uh, going. So I showed the, the upstream first uh, statistics. There are a number of packages that already have tests that have been migrated from various places, but we need to continue that as we go. And if your, if your uh, upstream project has a test suite, uh, I'm happy to talk with you about how to, you know, both get that into into Diskit, but then also uh, approach them about some upstream testing as well. So if if you're interested in this, definitely find me, or you can um, hang out in uh, Pound Fedora CI on Freenode, uh, where we usually hang out in there. But the con the conversion process is is going to be really important to uh, to getting more uh, more of those tests into Diskit. And I wanted to leave quite a bit of time, actually, for some open discussion, um, because the it looks like Fedora CI and CI in general is a, a popular topic. Um, so I'd kind of like to open it up for questions and uh, or comments about the the process that you've seen so far. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the question was, we have percent check. Um, <coughs> when should we uh, choose percent check over, you know, writing a new, uh, a new test that runs in the new system? And I think, um, you know, one of the major things is um, if percent check fails, it's always going to fail the Koji build. That's, a, um, uh, that's kind of a consideration you have to take in, into account. But it's also the fact that you can't do... Um, actual install tests and install the RPM on a system, maybe orchestrate it with a, a you know, two or three different systems that are, that are stood up. The idea is you want to install the RPM on a, uh, on a distro and then run a, a test suite against that entire uh, thing plus your update, right? And so percent check is, is good for doing, uh, I, I think is good for unit tests in some sense uh, that test the internal consistency of the package, but uh, anything else that interacts with the, the system outside of your package is better for uh, an external system to actually do that. Yeah, in the back. Yeah. So that's a uh, that's an implementation detail because the gating process itself was what was sending messages to 
the packagers. And so we know that was that goes to the um, what I said later on about uh, we didn't do a good set of policies in FMN that listen to the all packages pipeline and send notifications itself um, because we were relying on the gating process to do that for us. Um, yeah. E exactly. Yeah, that's um, that's a high priority for um, for going forward because I, I think there's a there's a couple of different cases when you would want that um, you, you'd want the test in place for a while and notifying you before you actually choose to gate on it um, for a number of different reasons. And I, I think that's a uh, sort of a killer feature that we we need to work on. Uh, I saw Matt next. Yeah, so the um <clears throat> the question is is there uh any um is there an effort to integrate with Fed package build and I don't know of anything off the top of my head but um but I do agree with you that would be uh pretty awesome if that um that process actually waited for the test to exit. Uh the the thing is the we don't have a a guaranteed turnaround time on tests so you know, it's something you could cancel but if you um, but yeah, if you if you wanted to uh, to wait on that, I'd that, I'd love to talk about that and see what we can do to uh, to work on that. Neil. Yeah, so I think, um, and, and that's part of, uh, that would be the mechanism for notifications going forward because um, the the original design was to do all of this through Bodhi so it would um, go through the update process. But we, yeah, it, it is too late at that point and um, it's, it's useful to have that information in multiple places. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's a um, that's that's certainly something that that we should look at for the the notification piece. So. Sure. Yep. Uh, Steph has. Do you have a comment or a question? Okay. <laughs> So, 
so to to shortly summarize the the conversation that just happened um uh, steph was basically saying that um the the notifications are important as long as we act on them because um, Fedora is kind of a uh, interconnected mesh of, of packages and you don't want uh, failures to pile up and affect other packages and uh, so we just had a little uh, kind of side discussion about where to uh, where to place that and I think um, yeah I think we agreed that multiple places is good and that Bodhi is probably too late was that a good summary other things to add? Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the suggestion is to run uh, a second round of testing um, when uh, when the update. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so doing combination testing of um of things in updates testing is uh was a suggestion. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. Uh is is so the question is is there a place to see the CI for the package building? Uh so you're running the the individual test results for your package or yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, so that's um I didn't put a URL in here. Did I? That is unfortunate. Um Yeah, so the Yeah, so the um I will update this real quick. Um I'm going to post the slides uh for this and and come and find me and I'll, I'll get you links to all of this stuff it's it is on the wiki there are links to these uh these individual pipelines but uh but i'll make sure you have that information uh Rusty, your question was um the there are two pipelines we have the the fedora atomic one and the all packages one what was the Yes. So this one, uh, this one right here, is the Fedora Atomic pipeline. We do a, an RPM build uh, in this infrastructure of the new package for the all packages pipeline. Which did I miss that somewhere? There we go. Yeah. So the the all packages pipeline is is similar, but it does pull from uh, in the in the build case. So you just uh, push to a branch in Diskit. Uh, we take the uh, the build that you know just happened in Koji, uh, presumably. Um, so basically, you you push to Diskit. We wait for um, Koji to say, "Hey, I have a new build on that." Uh, on that branch and then we pull that in for the pull request case so if you were to go out and open a pull request against a package we actually do a scratch build for you yep in the back yeah so the question is uh, what environments are available in um, in this uh, this pipeline, and uh, I'm sorry I didn't make that clear because uh, there are there is a container case that you can use in your test.yaml file, um, but in the like in the uh, the standard case for the test roles, what we actually do um, as part of the pipeline process, we take the Fedora Cloud image and we inject your RPM and then spin up a QMU process in OpenShift to um, to run the tests. So there's a um yeah we take the base image kind of explode it a little bit and add in the uh the test suite that you uh that you provided to us install your rpm and then let that you know tiny little vm actually run the the test suite how tiny is that um uh i don't know i can take a look afterwards and
Yeah, so the, the question is, um, the, the free IPA folks have larger scale tests to run and they're, they're concerned about, um, you know, call it multi-node orchestration and the resources that are required for that. Um, there's, a, there's a separate inventory in, um, uh, in this that, that will actually let you do sort of more than, than just a single virtual machine but then you can also um, if you if you end up having a really complex test suite or you're doing an integration test suite um, there are mechanisms that you can include in the test.yaml to basically provide um, a list of what you need to ask from the CI system and it will give you you know what you need basically memory requirements or if you need you know more than one machine at a time that's that's the job of the CI system to to kind of figure out. Uh, so the question is, does the CI pipeline assume uh, x86? And at this moment, yes. But the, there's no, there are no, um, there are no limitations other than plumbing in hardware into the the infrastructures, um, and making sure that you know we have the the uh, the scaffolding in place. So there's nothing in the in the test.yaml file that would prevent you from doing other architectures. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the question is, is that the simple Koji CI thing you see in Pagger? And no, that is a separate thing. Um, the that's that's part of the notifications plan. I think going forward is to have a similar little um, little tick in the Pagger pull request that comes from the all packages pipeline and says whether you you passed or failed a PR. Uh, no. So you you have to go into the um, uh, into the actual Jenkins interface, which is nasty. Uh, I saw a hand back there first. Yeah. I, I saw you first, so. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So the um, the the question is: Is there a way to uh, tell the test system to skip testing on pull request because of um, test suite requirements and, and things like that? Um, I am not. I am blanking on if that is possible. But I, I, 
come find me and we'll we'll figure out the answer together and um there So, let's so so let's let's talk about let's talk together about your your requirements there because I could see a case where we you know you run the um, the generic test suite on on pull requests, but then have a separate test suite that checks your your signatures on. Um, yep. Yep. But let's yeah, let's talk together about that and. Sure. Yeah. So the uh, the comment was um, th there should there should definitely be a focus on the user experience for packagers and um, yeah if if that wasn't explicit I think we we should make that explicit that yes we're we're looking into what that looks like for the the packager process because making that smooth is um, is important. Yeah. So the um, the the plan is um, so there's the upstream first repository um, that is you know the sort of the separate place where where tests are being staged in um, that. Ah. Ah, right, 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 right. Um, yeah. So there, I don't believe there are any restrictions if you choose one or the other. Um, I'm trying to remember if we make a. F yep. Yes. So what I'm hearing is we m we might want to uh, clarify that that part of the the recommendation there. Yes. Is 
Was that? <laughs> Question in the back. Uh, so the question is, uh, this is uh, pretty awesome for single RPMs. Is there a roadmap for modules? Um, I don't know yet. <laughs> sure. That's uh, yeah. So the um, the uh, I think I repeated the question. Is there is there a plan for modules? I don't I don't know. Um, yeah, uh, maybe that's maybe that's just part of documentation because the the test system itself should be general ish, and but the but if there are if yeah if there are limitations or ways that we can abstract some of the um, the the differences between doing bare RPM testing and module testing, I think we should. Yeah, Steph, go ahead. Yeah, so the, the question is, uh, can you kick off tests uh, for dependent RPMs? Um, that is sort of up to you as the tester um, for what is important for you to include in your test or not. So if you have a whole bunch of, of tight dependencies on other RPMs and you want to run their test suites after, after that, the, um, the Ansible specification will let you do that. But uh, Steph wants to answer again. <laughs> I've seen that exact thing on Dominic's roadmap uh, for the team is how can I either automatically look at the reverse dependencies and yep. have them trigger all the tests from my package so that I know I'm not breaking anyone, or actually list them, the other pack other test repos that I care about. Yep. Um, I believe that that's going to happen soon. If it doesn't, I know lots of s testing that I'm involved in won't be possible. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so the next uh, the next talk is starting pretty soon. So, oh, the lunch is starting pretty soon. So, yeah, that's even more important. Okay, so uh, I'm I'm up here. I'll be around all week if you want to talk about Fedora CI. Uh, let's continue uh, as we go. Thanks.